Greetings, unsettled souls. Go! Welcome to the correct news. I carrying on with the the discussion we've been having today about the ever honest uh, face of, of radical Islam. New York Post, one of the only papers worth reading in New York. The Taliban woman killed for not wearing burqa on the same day that they vow to honor women's rights. Now, the reason I mention this is uh, the same day for not wearing a burqa. Let's pause. A burqa? We were told, again, it was less than a day ago, we were told that they were going to allow women to wear hijabs, which is the head covering. That's bad enough. But now they want to put them back in the trash bag. Uh, the Grim Reaper outfit, the Holocaust cloak, uh, with no face, though, is, um, they look like walking trash bags. They really do. This is the kind of honesty you see. Um, Taliban fighters shot and killed a woman for not wearing a burqa in Afghanistan on Tuesday, the same day that the group pledged to usher in a new inclusive era in the country that honors women's rights. Yeah, new and inclusive. If they were any more inclusive, they'd be the American Democrat Party. A photo emerged of a woman in Takar province lying in a pool of blood. Well, that's inclusive. With loved ones crouched around her. Well, at least they were allowed to be there. After she was killed by insurgents for being in public without a head covering, according to Fox News. Well, how very kind of the Taliban. The killing came amid the group's version of a charm offensive after its swift takeover of the country in the absence of U.S. troops who had been propping up the Allied military groups since shortly after September 11th, of course. There's the honest face of uh, radical Islam. Taliban spokesman Mr. Honesty here, Zabdullah Majahid, held a news conference on to say that the insurgents would honor women's rights, oh, how very nice, within highly restrictive Sharia law. That's like saying you're going to practice good hygiene at the local trash dump. The militants urged... Did I compare Sharia law to a trash dump? Yes, I did. The militants urged women to return to school and work, and another Taliban spokesman granted a television interview to a female journalist, the whole very white of him. Mujahid also vowed to grant amnesty to Afghans who worked with the now toppled government backed by the U.S. Yeah, in other words, that means not kill them. There you go. That's what they want them to dress as. They look like drapery. When the Taliban ruled Afghanistan before 9-11, they prevented women and girls from leaving the house without a male chaperone and did not allow them to work or receive an education. Friends, my, my, my biggest question is this. How could anybody have expected anything else? I mean, really. Man, it is hot out here. Oh, but for crying out loud. I'm so lively. This bowl of this ocean blue. Um, what else would you expect? It's the only way CBS News can have any listeners is to have annoying ads. Um, how have we gotten in this situation to begin with? Blaming Mr. Trump? I mentioned in the other video that's not true. Trump had given them a series of red lines to which they did not dare to cross red lines which gave the Biden administration a an obvious um, bit of gumption and self-assurance which was not warranted you see respect sometimes comes with a bit of a threat Ronald Reagan was excellent at this he, the whole trust but verify Gorbachev and the Russians knew that if you made a deal with Reagan, you were going to keep that deal, or things were probably going to get very bad in a hurry. They didn't know that with Jimmy Carter before that. They knew that with Donald Trump. They knew without a doubt they did not. I remember when Mr. Trump had the Taliban in talks. They were, they were talking about bringing them to Camp David, and they were saying all these terrifying things about what Trump was doing. What Trump was doing was making sure that we could wisely get the troops out of the country to which we should have never gone, but that we could do so without a mass slaughter. And I'm not saying not a single person would have lost their lives, but I'm also not justifying it the way that Biden did, saying that there was no other outcome that was going to happen. 
there was definitely another outcome that was going to happen if you'd have done this right. And do it for one thing, doing it right meant maybe we should be moving out some of the people prior to, before a single troop leaves, before a single soldier leaves, before a single Marine leaves, or whoever was there. You don't dare call a Marine a soldier, by the way. Before we take them away, let's move some people out. Let's see how the Taliban acts. If they move against American interests, that's, that's, that's grounds for an attack. Now, again, like Ron Paul said, we should have never been there. But I'm talking about within the context of the fact that we are. Okay, if you attack us when we are there, then we're going to attack you back. We could have moved, got our troops, leave our troops, get our troops out. Yes, of course. But get the get our interests out first. Maybe we should have thought about this when we were passing out weapons to people who claimed they were going to be in the Afghan army and they were going Afghanistan army and they were gonna fight. They were gonna fight and win, and they were gonna keep their country safe from the terrorists to whom who abused them for how long? I mean, Islam's famous for abuse when they run a country, not always. There are some Islamic nations that are not like that, but the trouble is many times within Islam, the, the moderates get threatened and killed and they lose their willpower to those who are radicals because radicals don't care if they live or they die. A normal person does, and the, the good people within Islam tend to get slowly, slowly, more and more pushed down all the time, until you end up with people like the, the House of Saud, the, the horrible family that runs Saudi Arabia. Now, again, there are moderates within that, but again, they get silenced by the radicals who don't want women to drive. So... In the context that we were already there, we needed to move out in a way to which the Taliban was terrified to do anything, at least until after we were gone. And by doing it the way we did, we've opened the door for grief, not just for us, but for Europe and for most peace-loving, honorable people in the world. Unfortunately, elections have results. And uh, again, I'm a firm believer in the facts. Facts, not opinions. Facts would show that Mr. Trump uh, did not get a fair deal. But you know what? America also, Americans could have done more in terms of not accepting the trickery. And they also could have showed up in numbers which made it not even close to which this could have, the cheating could have never happened. We didn't do that. We're paying the price. And who knows how bad that price is going to be? Who knows if terrorism is going to come back to this country? Probably not on the scale that we saw with 9-11. Uh, but do you want to go to shows and have to worry about it? you want to go to a bar and have to worry about it? Well, we do now because we have poor leadership. And poor leadership, unfortunately, leads to poor results. That's a correct view, friends. Believe me. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to try to unite liberty-minded people, get them watching this show, hit share, hit subscribe, get them listening to people who are factual. And above all else, the truth matters. Show people what you've learned. And if they won't listen, then show it to five other people. Because, friends, if we don't wake up more people to the reality of what's going on, we're done. And I'm telling you, man, we are on the we are on the road to Dunville right now with this idiot that we have in office. And I'm not I don't think anybody listening to this has a lot of faith in Kamala Harris, who's gonna end up taking over when his cognitive abilities fail even further. So let's do it, friends. Let's get the truth out. Uh -huh.